In New Jersey and throughout the Northeast, our aging infrastructure presents challenges to our economy, environment, and even public health and safety. Yet a movement is underway to replace that crumbling foundation with a green and sustainable infrastructure. By capturing and reusing stormwater and building rain gardens at places like the Woodbridge Health Department, a sustainable future is within our reach. Chris Abrupta, a leading water resource expert at Rutgers University, here details the Green Infrastructure Initiative in his presentation for the best management practices for the Raritan River Watershed Conference. Okay, so uh, Judy um, you know, told me I had 10 minutes to speak, right? And then I got an email yesterday saying I had 15 minutes to speak. So uh, I added uh, 20 more slides to my presentation. <laughs> now, um, so I'm from Jersey, I talk fast, so if you, you know, try to keep up, guys, and uh, if you have any questions, I'll be around later on, and, and you could. Uh, you can ask those. I mean, that's talking about green infrastructure. Uh, I'm not really all that sure how it fits a lot into open space management, um, but uh, it is an important topic. Uh, that's my email address. I get about 120 emails a day, so if I don't get back to you right away, you know, be persistent. Um, and that's our website, and this presentation will be up on our, our website. Okay. Um, what I'm passing around is uh, we actually got a grant uh, from Sussex County. Uh, to do a green infrastructure seminar series. Uh, so we'll be doing 10 seminars up in, in Sussex County, uh, and that's what's going around there, and I guess you guys can come to that too. I think it's probably open to the general public. Um, green infrastructure has been a buzzword uh, throughout the country lately, and um, what tends to be happening is all our infrastructure is aging, deteriorating, and it needs to be replaced. So we're trying to figure out how do we replace that in a green way. Okay, so that's more environmentally friendly, uh, more cost efficient, um, and we're trying to look for opportunities where we can show that. And you can see one of the goals really is to reduce maintenance costs, right? Because our, all our municipalities are broke, all our counties are broke, uh, and we really don't have time to be mowing detention basins every week. You know, we need to, we need to kind, of, kind of save some money. So green infrastructure, real simply, is a, an approach to wet weather management that's cost-effective, sustainable, environmentally friendly. Um, green infrastructure kind of started in uh, very urban areas, okay, where they had combined sewers, where the sanitary sewer and the storm sewer were combined, okay. So um, what tends to happen is when it rains, uh, the stormwater gets into the sewer and the sewer overflows. So you have raw wastewater going into a local stream, okay. So this happens in a lot of cities. It's still happening today in, in Newark and in Camden and in Gloucester City and and other places throughout New Jersey. Um, so the trick to this is, well, we can fix this. Uh, there's two ways to fix it. One way would be to separate the sores. So you have a storm sore and a sanitary sore. Well, that's big bucks. And you're digging up roads, putting in new piping, huge, huge amounts of money. Another way to stop these sores from overflowing is to stop the stormwater from going into it. So what if you captured the stormwater in rain gardens, in green roofs, in other systems, and held the water there, and released it back to the atmosphere through the plant leaves through evapotranspiration or evaporated it or, or got it back into the ground and put it back into the ground or got it to the system way, way after the storm. Then you wouldn't have these sores overflowing raw wastewater. And that seems to be a more cost-effective way. So cost-effective that the uh, city of Philadelphia is spending billions of dollars trying to do this because it costs many, many more billions to separate the storm source systems. Uh, it's going on in Chicago. It's going on in New York City. It's going on in uh, Portland, Oregon. It's one of the big places it's happening. So, um, so we started a, a, a program here in New Jersey, Rutgers Cooperative Extension. And, and I'm with the Cooperative Extension Service, and you know, our job is to kind of run around and say, help people solve their water problems. Okay, so, um, so we've been doing that, and we've got you know, nine projects I want to run quickly through and show you uh, some of the work we've done. So we've got the Woodridge Health Department here, and we've got two downspouts that came down and went into this big grass area. Every time it rained, this grass area would fill up with water. It was very hard, and the water, so the water would go into the ground, so the water would seep back into these two office, offices next to, uh, next to this area, okay? So every time we got a half inch of rain, these women, you know, their carpets would get wet, and their purses and papers on the floor would get wet. So, so we said, well, we're going to come and put a rain garden in to fix that. Um, they were very skeptical about that, okay? So what we did was we built this little crescent moon rain garden. The water now goes into the rain garden, seeps into the ground, and now the water doesn't go into their offices anymore. I went there on a Monday uh, this spring after we had about five inches of rain over the weekend, and the lady actually gave me a big hug because she said, usually when we come in after a weekend like that, our offices, our carpets are soaked, our offices are ruined, 
and there wasn't a drop of water in their offices because now it's being captured in this garden and going into the ground away from the building. Okay, so it turned out to be a great success. And now, you know, they, they look at butterflies and wildflowers, and they don't have to look at all the cars, you know, out there. Now, the mosquito control guys were involved in this, too, um, you know, because they use this building a lot. This is the health department building. So, um, so they wanted to be highly involved in this construction, so they came and, and sat outside their cars and watched me build this and, and shouted direction to me. Um, and then when it started, you know, until it started raining, uh, and then they uh, sat in their cars and yelled the direction to me. So... Um, but, you know, they weren't believers in this at all, but we convinced them that this was actually a great way to go. Uh, and they turned out to be really great guys in the end and really helpful uh, with the project. Um, okay, so Hillsborough Township calls me up. Some of you might have heard me tell the story. I actually live in Hillsborough Township, and the township assistant planner calls me up and says, uh, Chris, you know, we heard you're the guy who can fix our detention basins. And I said, okay, well, uh, I'll bite. How are they broken? And they said, well, Bucky doesn't want them open. I said, okay, who the hell's Bucky? Well, he's head of public works, and he's had six detention basins that are impossible to mow. So they wanted us to fix them so we wouldn't have to mow them. I said, what if I fix them so they infiltrate more water, they treat the water? Well, that's great, as long as Bucky doesn't have to mow them. Okay, so they said, what's this going to cost? I said, well, you know, we're a grant-funded program, so I've got to charge it for it, but um, I'll use my senior design engineering students, and I've got an engineer on staff, will oversee their work, so it'll be $12,000. So those were said, well, is it $12,000 a base? And I said, no, $12,000 for all six. I heard this thud, and there was a guy falling out of his chair. So then he gives us a contract, we did the designs, and they kind of, you know, we come up with engineering plans, and I'm a P, so I signed the plans, and Rutgers Liability Insurance is on the hook, I guess, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Um, concrete low flow channels, which were designed to, uh, for mosquito control, which completely don't work because they get clogged and create mosquito problems. So then we start taking these basins and we start naturalizing them. So the plans for Hillsborough went over to the Environmental Commission and the Green Team. And now the Green Team is working with Girl Scouts who are trying to get their Gold Star, um, Eagle Scout projects. Uh, there's actually kids who, when they do their bar mitzvah, I didn't know this because I'm not Jewish, but when you do your bar mitzvah, you have to do a service project. So these kids were collecting books and giving them to the library, and the library said, we don't want any more books. So they called me up and said, what can we do? I said, well, hey, you can plant some of these detention bases. So these kids are doing these as projects. So, so now, you know, a, a $20,000 retrofit job for planting a detention basin costs about $2,000 in plants, and there's a lot of kids who come out, and a lot of adults who come out with them to help do this. So they start planting these things, and then, you know, they, they look natural. And what tends to happen is if you as a municipality stop mowing the basin, homeowners call up, and they say, wait a minute, you're not taking care of my basin. So instead, we go, we put a big sign up. You know, special basin restoration project. We explained to homeowners around that, you know, this basin has been selected from all the basins in the town. We get the special treatment. So we're going to plant it and, and stop mowing it, and, and it's going to be beautiful. And, and then they get all excited, you know, when we tell them when it's done, they can get their picture taken by the sign and put it in the front page of the local paper, and, and it'll be great, you know. And um, So that, that's a lot of work that we're doing. So now, you know, town's going to have to mow this. You figure one basin, if it takes an hour to mow it, one guy an hour in low and he's mowing it 20 weeks a year, that's 200 man hours. Now that's not enough time to fire anybody, but that's 200 hours that he could be cleaning out catch basins, could be fixing potholes, they'd be doing other things instead of sitting on a mower, driving around a basin that doesn't need to be mowed. So, um, you know, so then we, we do some of them that look really nice where, you know, we have volunteers come in and put shrubs, and so it all depends on what people are looking looking for. Okay, so this one was done down in, uh, in Morristown, uh, New Jersey. So, 